Hey guys, welcome to a recap of Love is Blind Season 5, Episode 3 to 4. Y'all, I was not ready for the twists and turns with these major characters in Love is Blind. I feel like, is this a scripted series? Is this a setup? Is this a plot to make us, you know, binge watch, fall in love with Love is Blind again? Now, initially, I liked Johnny, but Johnny is a walking red flag. She is a red flag, and I have no sympathy for her. I revoked the hug that I was wanting to give to her, but she is a walking red flag. The what she is putting Chris through, I think, is unfair. Now, what we learn is that, you know, when Izzy said that, you know, he is not moving forward with johnny johnny she went around and told a lie to chris and you know she said to chris that you know she, ultimately she wanted him that at first you know she typically goes for guys like izzy and it was her error her mistake that she made the same mistake again now this is what she said to izzy initially she said to izzy that she didn't want to be with chris because chris is the safe guy and she typically goes for the safe guy and so she doesn't want to make the same mistake again and that's why she chose to be with izzy at first so it's just crazy to me how she is twisting and turning her words and i wanted chris to say no 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 and run away and and move on from this however what we learn is that ultimately you know they run into each other at the airport because at first chris he rejected johnny but when they were leaving and they were in the airport, they had a funny little story going on of how they met and they ended up being together. So I'm like a little bit disappointed because Chris is such a great guy and I didn't like how Johnny was manipulating her words to leave here with something because you don't have to leave this experiment with a partner. Uh, you should make genuine connections. But for her to manipulate her lies and play around with people's hearts, I did not approve. And also, I have to add that, you know, Johnny, what she did was after Izzy rejected her and she went back to the women's pod, she was trash talking Izzy. She said, um, well, Izzy has a poor credit score and he doesn't live like in a nice place um, um, to the ladies. And I felt like, wow, but you really wanted to be with him. So why are you switching up your story? I just think Johnny is a completely a whole red flag and Izzy dodged a bullet. Now, what really had me is the whole situation going on with Uche, Aaliyah, and Lydia. Now, I was not expecting that we would be in a scenario in which two of the contestants know each other in real life and had dated each other in real life. Now, this is giving me single white female. This is giving me a horror story um, because... We saw Aaliyah and Lydia's connection. These two look like best girlfriends, but little did we know that Lydia already knew Uche and had dated Uche and was, you know, getting herself close to Aaliyah. This is so weird and so awkward. And I understood where uh, Aaliyah was coming from, where she started to pull away and leave from the whole experiment because this was too much, you know? Lydia was sharing with Aaliyah how, you know, she knows that Uche has a nice car, he lives in a nice home, his, uh, that he has a cute dog and the stuff that she has bought for the dog. That is crazy and uncomfortable. So I felt like, okay, I can understand where Aaliyah is coming from, but she did not communicate that to Uche. Like she decided to up and leave Uche without, you know, a conversation about Lydia making her feel uncomfortable. Now they did have a conversation in which Uche was the one to let Aaliyah know that she previously dated um, Lydia and he was intimate with Lydia three months before doing this experiment. Now, I'm happy that he was the one to break the news to her because I feel like it would have been a backstab if she was to find out this information from Lydia. However, I don't think that, you know, Uche is truly ready for this experiment because it seems like he has a lot of uh, loose ends that hasn't been resolved three months before the experiment. I feel like, you know, who knows? But... It's interesting how he shares that it could have been possible that Lydia 
was in his home and realized that he was applying for this show and then she applied herself to the show that makes this whole thing super scary and uh, i don't blame leah from you know being very scared of the situation but once again she could have let him know that you know she is choosing to you know remove herself from the situation instead of just running away like that i don't think she should have just run away um without really having a conversation with uche now lydia 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 you're not helping this situation at all either i think she's doing small things to get into alia's head saying things like i can understand and be in your shoes at this point i'm thinking she wants to be in alia's shoes she wants to be alia um ultimately you know Lydia, she is focusing on live, leaving this experiment with somebody too as well. She's not leaving here without a man. So she is talking to Milton and, you know, she's trying to build a connection with Milton. However, Uche is, you know, getting his, you know, feelings about this situation too because he talks to Milton and shares to Milton how you don't have to um, propose to Lydia if you don't want to. I felt like, you know, given that... He hasn't communicated to Milton that he previously dated to Lydia. I don't think he's the one to give advice into the situation or give his two cents. I felt like that was quite unnecessary and it makes me wonder if he still hung up over Lydia because it was just three months ago and they were with each other for quite some time. But oh, this is giving me crazy vibes. This is giving me scripted stories. I wonder if these two are plants inserted by producers to make this show much more interesting. But I'm here for it because I don't think that, you know, <laughs> I don't think that Taylor and JP are doing much for me as people who are supposedly in love. They don't really talk much. And, you know, they did get to see each other and, you know, it was quite quiet. It wasn't so overwhelming. And I was like, ooh, I was like, okay, something has to happen. Where's the sparks? I was wondering, curious if, you know, JP found um, Taylor attractive and if Taylor found him attractive because she did mention that he has a gap and she doesn't really do gaps, okay? So... This couple for me is, you know, not a confirmed match, but we'll see what happens. Things can change, things can blossom. We just have to wait and see. But honey, I felt like it was a lackluster reveal. Now, the reveal between Milton and Lydia, I felt like I didn't realize how tall Milton was or how short Lydia is because this two as a match, I'm like, how is this going to work? These two have such a significant height difference. That is insane. And I, I found it so hilarious that Milton was so worried, so concerned of his beard not being full enough because he looked like he was 21 when he's 24. And you know, Lydia doesn't date younger men like that. So I thought it was an interesting match, an um, interesting pairing. Um, they did have an intimate kiss and I did like their connection. I was, you know, seeing how this play out, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Now with um, Izzy and Stacy, these two, I'm quite hopeful with them. However, I was concerned to what Stacy will say or think when she would when she saw Izzy, okay? So, with Izzy proposing to Stacy, you know, to him, he's, you know, questioning his choice, questioning his decision because Stacy hasn't gotten so deep compared to Johnny, but I do think he dodged a bullet by picking Stacy. So, these two, I'm hoping that, you know, it's a strong and lasting match because i feel like these two they do have a connection i do like their conversations we have gotten to know izzy we still getting to know stacy but ultimately i just want you know for these relationships to pick up a little bit because i feel like 
not enough discussion has been made for me to feel like okay we have a solid couple that's gonna propose to each other and say i do at the end of this whole experiment so i want to know your guys's thoughts about uh love is blind season five i feel like we don't have enough couples i feel like we've seen a lot of faces and a lot of people who are involved in the women's pod in the men's pod but not too many connections and you know we are limited to who are connecting but i felt like you know if taylor and jp are a couple and they're supposed to be the strong couple i'm like i'm a little bit nervous because they didn't go so deep and even though they feel such great feelings with each other i i was not convinced now with lydia and milton you know that's a plot within itself given what's going on with uche and Aaliyah. we'll see in the future what happens with these two but you know aside from the lydia situation i did like the connection between alia and uche but it seems like when other factors are involved ew, it's it, it gets complicated and i feel like you know us humans we do that to ourselves so guys i'm gonna know what you guys think of love is blind episode three and four or I'm looking forward to the future episodes so I'm gonna recap those two as well so stay tuned and if you made it here might as well like share and subscribe so as always share as much kindness as possible and we'll see you guys soon bye